Yes, today we will talk about model fitting through uh, least square solutions, Ransack algorithm and half transform. Uh, and we will be fitting models to geometric data, obviously, as we are in digital geometry processing course here. Uh, these methods will be fundamentally different and they will be effective. Uh, I should note that uh, surface reconstruction is a general version of this problem. In that topic that we have already discussed, we were able to fit arbitrary models to geometric data, uh, so they don't have to be, uh, those models don't have to be represented by parameters, uh, like lines, line primitives, or plane primitives, or sphere primitives, anything can be uh, fit through surface reconstruction algorithms like the implicit ones with Martian cubes or explicit ones with Delanoi triangulations so you can remember them if you uh, miss them you can go check that video uh, but again today's class will be a special case because it will be fitting primitives that can be represented by a few model parameters and in the end I will show you some bonus material uh, so uh, ba basically they would be geometric problems like distance and intersection computation. They are kind of related um, to the sub-problems that we will be seeing in the main topics of today. So let's begin with the least squares line fitting. Let that primitive B line in the first example here. And I will be using this vertical distance as a measure to uh, define the quality of my fit. So what is that? Let's open a pencil here. Uh, so I have this empty circles, which are my data points. And I want to fit an ideal line, which can be represented by two model parameters, A and B. A is the slope of this line, which is rise over run, uh, which is positive in this example, and B would be the y-intercept which is negative in this example, like here. Uh, okay, so the distance that I'm interested in is this vertical distance. So what is it? To get that, I will use a particular point, x equal to xi, because this is a special point for which I have a data called xi, yi. So when x is xi, uh, my special point sample point has this output of yi so this is in my pocket but there is also a point coming from the ideal line when x is xi the ideal line will give me this point called xi plus bi and i will take the difference of xi axi plus b and yi that's the idea so let's read it also from here for x is xi where I have data, which is this point, the A and B give me the Y value of my ideal line that I am looking for, and this point will be different from my YI point, so I will take that difference, and I will sum these differences through all the data points. So this would be sum, basically not sum. So it will be sum. Uh, yeah, that is the idea. Now let's... and. So this is the difference, and I will take the square of it and to amplify the bigger errors, and then it will also make the derivatives easy, so that's why we call this least squares, we will take the squared sums. So partial derivative of this with respect to A, my first unknown, would be this, right? I just rewrite this thing. Uh, so I don't put the terms with without any A, or b in it because a and b are my variables so in particular i will not be using my i square here sorry about that but y i minus a x i is here or y i minus b so minus b y i is here etc so when you take the partial derivative with respect to a for the first term, I have minus y i x i, okay, and it goes like this. Mm. So for this term, I have a second one, etc. And I set this derivative to zero. 
again as a pointer I have given you the geometric intuition of this derivative by dipping some elephant to a water in my shape uh, the form shape registration slice you can check that out and there I explained why we set it to zero etc so those intuitions are there uh, again the derivative of the same function with respect to b would give me for instance minus y because b, is go b goes away etc plus something set it to zero rewrite these equations uh, okay so sum applies to everywhere <clears throat> now divide everything by minus 2 okay so minus 2s are gone and so leave a and b alone okay this is the idea similarly for the partial derivative with respect to b leave a and b alone so let's take a random term here why is there a bn here because because of what i have summed b's and many b's from 1 to n b's remember i got rid of minus 2's before so that's why i have bn for instance so this can be represented as a matrix system, a linear system. Put the unknowns here, x. Uh, so for instance, a needs to be hit by sum of xi squares. So it is here. And it's b needs to be hit by sum of xi's, which is here due to this hit, etc. Yeah, so uh, this is an ax equal to b system. I have a square a with a non-singular a, so x can be solved fastly now be careful i have fit a, a one degree polynomial here which is a line i can fit any degree polynomial same logic so let's for instance try to fit a parabola here in that case the unknowns will be not a and b but also a b c let's get rid of a b c let's use a0 a1 a2 so a polynomial would be a0 plus a1 times x and plus a2 times x square right remember oh, and in general a m times x to the power of m so in this scenario since I am dealing with this polynomial uh, so the same logic applies take one interesting point x i y i so it gives me this interesting y i points now I want to take a difference so the, in the ideal polynomial I will get that y point by plugging the xi to the polynomial equation because remember xi and yi are paired since I am using yi in the left hand side here I need to find the ideal y point at x, the xi point so this will give me m plus 1 equations just like here when m is 1 it has given me two equations which is 1 plus 1 is 2 in the m, m dimensional case m degree polynomial i will have m plus 1 equations so i will have an m plus 1 times m plus 1 system matrix etc it will still be very fast to solve let's do a, a concrete example here uh, a point set and I want to fit a polynomial, a parabola, a two degree polynomial. So in this case, as I mentioned before, a0, a1x, a2x square. So take a sample point, which I hit by plugging xi to the polynomial, which is a0 plus a1xi plus a2xi square. And for that case, the corresponding sample point has the value yi so i need to take this difference um, before expanding this let me give you the general framework here for any degree not just two so basically yi is the fixed one from the sample and my polynomial squared so chain rule two comes to the beginning from inside i take derivative i have minus so minus two and i also have the derivative of f with respect to one variable like a then like a0 then a1 then a2 etc so apply that logic here uh, so this is the thing that i will use this is the pattern so sum minus 2 yi minus the 
polynomial, which is a0a1xi and a3xi squared, times, so what is the derivative of this function with respect to a0? It is 1. In the second run, derivative of this function with respect to a1 is, be careful, this goes away, this goes away, this is xi, so there is an xi term here. What is the derivative of this function with respect to a2? They go out, go out, and I have xi square, so which is here. Set it to zero, and uh, play exchange rules. Uh, so, in the end, we have uh, uh, this set of unknowns that I call x, and this sums, etc. So, this is the pattern, and you can solve it as before. So, when we have a square matrix, number of unknowns and the number of e equations are the same, everything is nice, I can take the real inverse and find the solution. But when there are more equations than unknowns, which would lead me a non-square matrix, like here, it means that the system is overdetermined. So, let's take an example. I have two equations, but one unknown x, and it is... There is no exact solution here, basically x equal to 1, x equal to 2. So you can find an approximate solution using least squares. How can you do it? You will not be able to solve it exactly, so you will solve this difference and you will minimize it in the least squares. And so this is a vector, length of this vector squared. Basically, you can also view it like that. Okay, sometimes you can have exact solution. Similarly, when the number of unknowns is more than the number of equations, or in other words, when the number of equations is less than the number of unknowns, then you have an underdetermined system, which can lead to no solution, like this example. Then you will find an approximate one using this tactic, or you can have infinitely many solutions, like this example. In particular here, if you subtract this from this equation, z equal to 2. So once you set z equal to 2, you can put any x and y, infinitely many of them. Okay, so these are problematic systems that can still be solved with least squares though. So to be exact, how can I solve it? Uh, basically, so I will end up with pseudo inverse, but let me first show you how it comes. Remember, I want to minimize this, so rewrite it with the transpose tactic because it is the squared length of a vector v, right? Uh, so I can write it as v transpose times v, basically near algebra trick, because basically this is the squared sum of each component, right? So v0 squared plus v1 squared plus v2 squared. This is the same. When you write this horizontally because of transpose, this v0, v1, so let's keep it one two dimensional, will be hitting the original vector v0, v1, so v0 square plus v1 square, same thing. Now distribute transpose inside axt like this, and again we have studied this in detail in shape registration or shape. Uh, mesh deformation slides. So it's simple. So you end up with this system. When you take the derivative of it with respect to x, I have 2 ATAx minus 2 this thing, and this goes away. Set it to 0, and I end up with this system. Now be careful, this is square, because even if a is n by m, then a transpose is going to be m by n n by n, and when you take the multiplication, the end result will be m by m, which is square. So you will take the inverse of this ATA, uh, multiply it from the left, and also from the left for the right hand side. So this is also known as the pseudo inverse of A, by the way. So what you need to do is, uh, long story short, to solve this is minimize uh, ax minus b, in the least square sense, you will hit, you will do this uh, 
pseudo inverse times b pseudo inverse of a times b uh, I am proceeding uh, to a, another least square line fitting problem but now I will use perpendicular distances be careful in the previous slides in the beginning I have used this vertical distance right it is still okay makes sense but now I will do this uh, normal distance to get that I need to use a different line representation which is based on the normal of a line and the distance of a line from the origin so in this example this line has this distance from the origin which is a negative distance uh, sorry of this distance from the origin and it also has this normal okay perpend this normal so I will move this normal to origin so any point on this line take this point okay this point is basically a vector from origin to this point so the dot product, the projection of this point to the normal here if the length of this projection is d then it means that xy is literally on my line so hence n and d represent my line uh, so again dot product of this vector on n if it is negative d because the direction of normal is this and this direction is here so the projection length has a negative component here that's why I have a minus d here so rewrite this this is my line equation nx plus d is equal to zero so let's plug this into our lives in general for any point p so these are my input points uh, n dot pi plus d if it is on the line then it will be zero wonderful but uh, it won't be in general so I will minimize this so rewrite this where this transpose tactic that I had described before uh, ah, so yeah yeah uh, mm -hmm. uh, so what we end up with is this equation okay so these are all just uh, algebraic manipulations I don't want to go through all of them I have already done it here and so they are very similar so in the end D will happen to be this what is that if you make some notation change D is take the mean of the point set which is called P bar and you uh, take the distance uh, of that to the plane so in other words make the dot product of it with the normal then to solve for n I rewrite this uh, an area function with the d that I just found okay so it will enable me this uh, change of variables because I have the same n and I have pi minus p so this is the mean shifted points I will call them p tilde from now on so the, this equation boils down to n dot p tilde square plus something so what is this in order to in order for that product to work, work the n must be units must be a unit vector so the length of it must be one so this since this is a minimization uh, I will not allow big lengths here for sure but I may still allow very small short lengths to prevent that from happening I have this additional penalty term so whenever this is far from one it will give me a penalty so I will uh, pull it towards one okay that's the logic so let's rewrite this with the transpose tactic uh, and I just zigzag places here so ntpi times ntpi transpose okay and this is the same now see what happens and t and n they don't depend on the sum i so I will leave them out so I will just use this part in in the middle and this is a special matrix this will lead to a covariance the covariance matrix of the uh, points uh, and again I have given you the intuition of this with many examples in the uh, shape registration class uh, as well as in the surface reconstruction class so you should check them out if you are not comfortable with covariance matrix so if I rewrite uh, this 
Uh, where am I? I am at this point. Okay. Take the don't rewrite this. Take the derivative to this with to n, which is quadratic here. So I have two c n minus two t this thing. I will set the derivative equal to zero. So this is going to be equal to this. So what does this equation tell? The n that I am looking for is an eigenvector of c because after the multiplication it doesn't change direction, it only changes magnitude. So again I have given you the intuition of this in the uh, shape registration class. Uh, so basically a matrix, the eigenvector of this matrix is such a vector that once the matrix is applied to it, it will only change magnitude, possibly. Maybe magnitude doesn't even change. But it will certainly not change direction. So maybe some magnitude change. So I don't even have to write this. So this thing is an eigenvector of this matrix intuitively. Okay, so I found the answer. N is the eigenvector of the covariance matrix. And to keep things minimum, I will use the minimum value eigenvector. The eigenvector with the minimum eigenvalue. So the recipe is take the covariance matrix of your point set and take the eigen find the eigenvector of it eigenvectors of it there will be three of them if you are in 3D uh, to use the one with the smallest eigenvalue uh, if you are in 2D there will be two of them if you are in 3D there will be three of them and you will be fitting a plane to your uh, 3D points. Here we have fitted a line to our 2D points and while using perpendicular distance tactic. Still perpendicular distance here as well. Okay, so let's uh, go to a different approach for the fitting. It will be called RANSAP, randomized sample consensus. The idea is assuming that I can uh, model my primitive with few parameters. Uh, then this goes fine. So with the least squares fit in this point set where I have outliers, as you can see, outliers will ruin my life. So I will end up with this result. But truly, I expect this, right? So what Ransak does is it takes uh, two points because for a line I need two points. If I take only one point, this there will be infinitely many lines passing through it, so it doesn't work for me. But with in 2D, only two points are enough. So for the optimal scenario, you will look at n choose to quadratic or n square time. It will take. You will look at all the pairs, but hopefully you will not look at all of them. What you will do is pick a pair, draw the line, and then find point to line distances. Okay, sorry, not that distance, but this distance, these distances, and sum them up. So if, if these, not, not sum them up, sorry, if the point to line distance is close enough, then announce those points as inliners, good points. And if the number of inliners are good enough, which is not the case here, but which is the case here, then stop. Then this is your line, actually. You don't. In the worst case, you exhaustively look at all the n square pairs, but uh, you can make a shortcut. Uh, you can break the loop early if you already find good uh, number of inliners. In 3D, I need three points to fix a plane, right? Because let's take this for instance. If I only pick two points, and then this is one plane passing through these two points, but this is another, this is another. There are infinitely many planes, right? Three, two is not enough, but with three points, like these, my fi three fingers are the points, there is only one plane, which is this plane. I can't rotate it anymore. So, in this scenario, I will be basically looking at all the triplets and plus three, which will give me an even worse case time, which will be cubic and cube. In the worst case, so see as the number of parameters increase, the computational cost increases. So what you do is you fit a plane to your. If your tree comes from here, you will be basically fitting this plane with many number of inliners, and you can detect this as a dominant plane. 
This is useful, for instance, to, for scene segmentation. You have a robot uh, navigating through an environment, an office, for instance. It has this depth sensor, so it can perceive the 3D point cloud around it. But to uh, to execute a command like get me a coffee mug on the coffee table, get me the mug on the coffee table, it needs to segment this scene into mug, coffee table, uh, wheel, keyboard, wall, etc. So in the beginning, what we do in general is we get rid of this dominant place like floor and walls. Right, so then this ransack is incredibly helpful. And if you have balls inside your domain, for instance, then you can remove spheres, which can also be which can also be represented with few parameters, right? So uh, that is the idea here. Uh, now I will move to half transform, which is a word based algorithm. It is very similar to ransack in the sense that Ransack also has some voting mechanism involved, right? Because when you have this line as your candidate, it has it collects some votes from the inliners, right? Uh, it has some confidence. So now half transform will uh, be a similar voting based mechanism. So the similar voting part, voting idea is similar. The approach is totally different. So what I will do is the following. Assume I want to fit a line. Well, line can be defined by only two parameters. The angle of the line. Okay. So as I rotate this uh, purple line a little bit, the angle of it, make the angle of this line making with the y the vertical axis it will increase. So angle has something to do with it. Distance of this line to the origin. So it is here now. If I move it here, it has a different d value, and I also slightly rotated it, so it will have a different uh, angle value as well. So the idea is the following: I have this uh, parameter space, angle, and distance. Okay. So for every sample point, I will vote for the parameters that it supports. So for instance, this point will support this yellow line which has these two values, 124 angle and 44 distance. So 120 and 40, so it will have uh, one watt, okay, here. For this point, this line will collect only one watt. Similarly, green will collect some watts, blue will collect some other watts. But let's focus on this purple line. It will have some watts. In particular, it will get watt for angle 60 and distance 80 part which is about here when i move to the next point be careful this point will also give what to that purple line because it will also support the very same line so 60 and 80 ish so it is not exactly 80 because it is a continuous word i need to discretize it i will take samples in the angle values and in the distance values so it is uh, there needs to be some sampling here but still the idea is the same when i go to the third point it will support the purple point again so it will it has already collected three points from three votes from three points which is perfect so in the end this purple will be uh, advertised it will be this one but let's go for the blue line here for instance it has one watt from this due to this point here you may you may make some misunderstanding that it collects another watt but be careful it has the same angle same orientation so uh, but uh, model space is two dimensional the distance of this to origin is different in this case it is zero it is on the origin passing through the origin in this case, it is non-zero, okay? So this point will support a different line. So this blue and this blue are not the same lines, okay? And here is just another example. It has nothing to do with this one. In this case, I have two lines. If you collect these walls, white means high, 
like intensity you will have two sparks in the parameter space one I think for this and this spark is due to this horizontal line so let's make it even more practical in general you will be given a scene not only three points so you will begin with an edge detection because you don't want to vote for all the pixels so some of the pixels are just idle they are not valuable so edge detection will give you apple points as well I want to uh, discard them it will happen automatically with the half transform so for this edge detection point it supports this uh, green line okay so I will put one vote here for theta and r which I called D actually in the previous slide so this is an illustration from this uh, professor's website which is very nice and this is a green another light green line it gives votes to this to this point actually if you do many other lines then you will have this shape it's kind of interesting how this shape looks like a sinusoidal shape and indeed if you do it for all all really all the points you will literally have this continuous shape it is not so important the idea is you will get this sinusoidal shape then this is all due to this point then when you do this point you will get another sinusoidal shape so let me copy this one here I think this one is this one right so it didn't overlay exactly but assume that it did so for the second point you will be getting this curve uh, it should be intersecting here apparently right because this is the one where lots of volts are accumulated so it has some theta value and some distance value then you will advertise that rd for your line okay so that settles it uh, in the least squares we think we have ended up with a closed formula which gives a super fast algorithm uh, it is robust to geometric noise because we are doing that distance to the primitive but it is not robust to outliers at all as we have seen here uh, in pain uh, yes what else Ransack and Tuff are the robust versions of it but they are not super fast uh, actually the number of model parameters should be low in Ransack it should be at most 8 typically in half it is even more expensive because remember in half transform you need to discretize the parameter space it's a continuous space you will take lots of samples through those through that space in Ransack you don't have any discretization issue you just pick pairs or triples of points and I will end this class uh, with some geometry problems it, they are still related to what we have discussed so far because uh, for instance I will be showing you a distance from a point to a line which has been used recently here when I was speaking my in layers I need distance from a point to a line so okay they are still related so let's begin with that then distance from P to this line given by P0 point and V direction basically it should be perpendicular to make it the shortest distance in other words uh, I am looking for this A point so this vector from A to P when I dot it to my V direction line direction it should give me a zero length projection but there's an issue here A has three unknowns three components uh, if I am in 3D A X A Y A Z or two unknowns if I am in 2D A X A Y but nevertheless I have only one equation so three unknowns one equation uh, underdetermined I need to do something about it I will be smart about it and I will use only one unknown because A can be represented with only one unknown starting from P0 go T amount on V direction okay T is the unknown then plug that in you will find your T value and then use that T uh, to find your a value then the distance is from p to a the length of that vector 
How about distance of a point to a plane, which we have done in the shape reconstruction days uh, when I was computing the sine distance function for the Martian cubes, remember? So I am looking for this distance, P0 is given as a point on the plane and normal is given as the norm of the plane. So I will take this vector from P0 to P and I will take the projection of this vector on this normal okay so it will give me this projection if you make that projection and I am interested in the length of this projection which is basically the dot product of this vector over n and remember uh, uh, notice that this distance if you shift it it is exactly this distance that I am looking for d other examples so distance between two lines here not any point involved so again I need to find these so basically I am looking for this distance perpendicular so if I call it v1 point here and v2 point on the second line this vector from v1 to v2 must be perpendicular to a vector from p1 to pt as well as a vector from p3 to p4 so that product should be zero. So remember that product idea. That product of this vector to this vector is the length of the projection of this vector A onto this vector B. Okay, so that product A dot B gives me that. So this is a very common operation in computer graphics and geometry pro digital geometry processing okay so if a is perpendicular to b then that that product is going to be zero that is the idea but the problem is two equations three unknowns because uh, actually six unknowns because v1 has three unknowns and v2 has three unknowns to fix that i will represent v1 as a point that depends on only one unknown t what is it start from p1 go in this direction from p1 to p2 and go t amount similarly go s amount on this direction for v2 and plug those values inside here for v1 and v2 and you will end up with your system set it to zero two equations two unknowns everything is nice s and t can be found instantly from where you can find your v1 point and v2 point and the distance is the distance from v1 to v2 which is an Euclidean distance what is it square root of uh, the component wise differences so v1's zeroth component minus v2's zeroth component and this term will be squared so, uh, and you will do it for all the components one by one yeah so let's do an intersection also not a distance here so the problem is you are given a line and the sphere so so let's analyze it so if you take a point on this line which is called p1 and you are also given the center of the sphere and the radius of the sphere are okay so if p1 is on the sphere then basically this trick applies the distance between p1 and c must be r right this is the incredible observation if this distance is r then you are on this spherical surface with a distance of r from c so i will write that down uh, this point is p0 go in v direction t amount and uh, take a vector from C to this point okay and the length of this vector should be R uh, and I take I will take the squared length so I will take the squared R so be careful this is a, a quadratic equation T is the only unknown it will be quadratic in T because it will be multiplied twice uh, this term will be multiplied by this term again so t will be hitting tv will be hitting another tv from the right so t square will arise quadratic equations as we all know will give two one or zero solutions 
the real solutions. So two solutions is the one in this case. Two t values, t1 will give me the point p1 and t entering point and t2 will give me the exit point which is p2. But there may also be this case, right? Your ray is tangent to the sphere of interest then there will be only one t and it will give you one point of intersection there is also this zero solution case in which case your ray is like this it is out of the leak of this uh, sphere not the leak but it's out of the shape of this sphere so it doesn't intersect there is no point okay so you plug uh, before doing that plugging I will do some change of variables because p0 minus c is constant so I will just use a for them then tv is that is equal to this so I just open this sum and set it to r and uh, leave 0 in the right hand side so you end up with your quadratic system which can be solved with high school tactics uh, yeah that's it actually uh, and as the potential project topics I can suggest you a comparison between these three fitting mechanisms that we have seen today also least squares meshes is this is a service reconstruction issue but still related uh, you don't have to you are not restricted to a model with some parameters you can fit any surface to the point cloud uh, like you can if your point cloud is the point cloud of the bunny then you will be ending up with the bunny uh, so surface reconstruction uh, papers are also potential project topic alerts uh, and I have given other examples in that set of slides uh, your unique here is half transform maybe you can also focus on that more there is deep learning based of transform recent work uh, not so recent actually I don't remember the date of it but anyway so yeah uh, that's it actually uh, with that I will stop thanks